Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are, whenever you listen to this. <clears throat> On today's podcast, we have a author who was nominated for the Bastard Award, the Harlan Award. He has 13 novels out and several projects. He's a Dutch author, and his name is Jay Sharp. Jay, how are you doing today? I'm fine, thank you. How are things over in the Netherlands? Yeah, it's a little bit weird up, and I think it's it's everywhere. It's a bit the same, but um, yeah, we're actually I think we're having another lockdown. So I, just, oh, no. I don't I don't like to think about it, about it too much. Excuse my accent. I'm from the Netherlands, so uh, I can speak perfectly English, but I have a weird accent. So <laughs> I don't Sorry think it's that. weird. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I don't think it's weird at all. I have a weird accent because I'm from South Dakota. <laughs> in the united states so <clears throat> and wisconsin so i have this like really strange combination i guess i don't know but i think i sound fine but you know whatever yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> american so that's good <laughs> american yes yep. americans we're, we're known for our great dialect over here right <laughs> <laughs> so i the one thing that i learned about you and i've known you for a little while now and and I didn't know this is that uh, you actually play in a blues band. Yeah, I do. For for about I think seven years now, at least in this band, I played in, in several projects and several bands uh, in the last uh, fifteen years. I think I picked up the guitar about twenty years ago, um, and uh, very quickly dove in my first blues band. But yeah, I've been with these guys for the last seven years. I think I have a cat here constantly wants to. Jumping. Oh, cats are allowed on go. the podcast. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have three cats here, and they're just jumping around. So if you see a cat somewhere here, it's you know why you know why. Um, but no, yeah, I'm uh, I've been with these guys for about uh, seven years now. Uh, we call ourselves a Chitling Crew, um, and uh, yeah, it's a blues rock band, so it's fun to do. The I was listening to it before we started the podcast. Uh, you sent me a link to uh, your YouTube channel, and uh, I have to say it's 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 pretty darn good i'm thanks. i'm i'm a fan of blues so i i enjoyed that very much so yeah, i do plan on checking that out a little bit more but like i said it's nice listening to that before uh just before the uh podcast so what else can you tell us about you <clears throat> uh well, i'm a little bit of a man of of many things um so uh like you mentioned i'm an author i'm a suspense author um so uh, that started about well, that I'm published uh, about eight years ago. I think my first novel came out uh, eight years ago. Um, I'm traditional published here in the Netherlands. Um, and my books have been published by about three major publishing houses. Um, and with one, I still have a contract with. And like most of my, I think eight of the 13 books came out with this company. It's called Silverspore. Um, and about a year and a half ago, I started, uh, I decided I wanted to reach more people and have my books translated and uh, yes i'm now i'm self-publishing my books now as well so at this moment i think i've published eight books so far well three books and uh, some short stories and i'm working on, uh, on more translations as well so uh so that yeah i'm an author um i'm a driving instructor as well yeah uh, so i teach motorcycles i teach cars uh and scooters um i don't know how it is in the states but here in the netherlands you have to have like a a driver license for every single category so uh so i do that um uh, you know what was funny as i went back home to south dakota <clears throat> uh for about two weeks here um and uh you know in the united states you have to have a motorcycle license you have to have a you know a license drive a car a certain license drive a you know a semi truck or you know whatever right uh but uh you don't need a driver's license for a uh, like a golf cart Oh, right. Okay. Or, yeah. you know, different things like that or, or little, you know, scooters that, uh, or mopeds that have uh, pedals on them. You don't need a driver's license for in South Dakota, at least. Um, but what's really funny is, you know, you know what a gator is? It's like no. a four wheel. <clears throat> it's, it's like a four wheeler, but it's got a cab on it and you're supposed to be able to, you know, drive it through, you know, just about anything, you know, they're pretty. Yeah. Um, the funny thing is, is that you can always tell who the uh, drunk drivers were that got their licenses revoked because they drive those gators all over the place and they don't need a right. license, no license, license plate. Yeah. Yeah. Just need blinkers and brake right. lights, <laughs> you know, which is funny. <laughs> yeah. So some of them that, uh, that are driving around have some makeshift, uh, 
you know, type of lights or whatever. The one that I was following and I pulled up next to it had little toggle switches on it. And so when he wanted to brake, he'd flip the brake light on and he'd flip it off <laughs> or the blinkers. He, you know, so he had three toggle switches on the dash and I was right. watching him as he was messing around with it. It's just like, dude, <laughs> but yeah, you see some some weird weird shit if you, you, see you look some around. Shit. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, you know, one question I have for you. So you're you're a traditionally published author, and you went into self publishing. So what do you see as the difference there? I mean, you know, you've experienced both worlds. Which one do you like better? And 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 what do you? Uh, what's the difference yeah, between the two? It's it's hard. Well, I, I, there are some differences, but it's hard to say which one I like better. Uh, it has. Just, disadvantage and advantages like everything is posed uh but i was the, the major thing the major concern i have when i first started self-publishing my books is i was so used to just basically write a, a novel and then hand it over to my publisher and they basically do the rest so they make sure i have a cover they did the marketing and and i'm a, a pretty hands-on guy in the sense that, that i like to do a lot of my marketing myself as well so i always did that uh, but I didn't have to. I mean, my publisher basically has that everything sorted out. But when I started self-publishing, of course, I suddenly need to find somebody to create my cover and find find somebody who can help me with a good book blurb and um, and as well the marketing as well, of course. So those were the major differences. You have to do everything yourself. Um, the big advantage is, however, if you do it the right way, you can earn a little bit more money if you self-publish your book uh, mm -hmm. because on average, if you are a traditional published, you get about between the 8 and 12% in royalties. Um, and um, if you publish on Amazon, for instance, um, and you have your book out for at least $2.99, you earn at least 70%. So it, it can be a little bit more lucrative, but yeah, depending on, of course, on the amount of copies that you, uh, that you sell. But yeah, there are, those are the few major differences. And as well, um, like... I think in book descriptions, for instance, there's a big difference on how to write a book descriptions for, at least for the Dutch market, not per se for a traditional versus a non, uh, versus self, uh, self publishing uh, a book. Uh, but the differences where it was like the book descriptions here are so different than if you want to upload one in on the States or sure. in, in, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> So I, I assume that, uh, or I'm making a leap here, that uh, because of that experience, that's why you uh, also set up the uh, Cutting Edge Studio? Yeah, yeah. Me and my wife actually started that uh, five, six months ago. Um, mm -hmm. And the major mm -hmm. reason was, was, was this. There were just, uh, as a self-publishing uh, self -publishing author, I was just scrolling the internet looking for companies that can help me out. And I was, I was finding companies like company A could help me with a book description, company B could help me with a cover and company C with, uh, well, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, come on guys, I just need one company that can help me out with everything. Um, and uh, I just talked about a cover of a book, a book cover. Well, I never had that problem, um, A, because I was with a traditional publishing company, of course, mm -hmm. but also my wife is a cover design artist and she actually works for the publisher that I have a contract with, um, which is great as an author, of course, because normally when you traditionally publish, you just write the book, send it over, and then at a certain point, your publisher is telling you, hey, this is your cover, you like it or you don't like it, but it's basically <laughs> take it or leave it. But uh, my wife's actually making those covers so I can just say to her what I have in mind. So that's always handy. So you have a little influence there. Exactly. I have a little bit of influence in there. So uh, we started out small. So uh, my wife had her own uh, website. And on my author website, I did offer some um, services. I think I had the book trailers because I make book trailers as well. Um, and I think I, had the, I think I had the book description as well on there. Uh, and we were just like, you know what, let's just combine those things and make one company. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, now we do, we do everything now. So we call ourselves a one-stop shop uh, for this reason. We just want to help, help as many authors out as we can. And just being that company that you can just uh, hand your book out and, and let us basically do the rest. I mean, you're still a self-publishing author. You're the one who is uploading your book, but we can help you out with everything you need, basically. So, so, so yeah. I, this is going to be a tough question for you, I think, but uh, um, maybe not. I mean, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of authors that are here in the U.S. And, you know, but what would a service like that cost? So if I had a book and I said, okay, here you go, 
Right. Um, you know, do the cover, do the blurb, do, uh, you know, do a, a trailer for it and everything else. I mean, what do those services typically cost? And, uh, I, can't, you know, I can't give you an, an, an overall rate because it depends a little bit on the, on the book as well, of course. I mean, also, especially also on the word count, like an edit uh, for, for a book for like 15,000 words costs less than, of course, than if you want to have a book edit that has like 90,000 words, of course. But uh, in general, uh, we have some packages. Um, our most popular popular packages is uh, a cover design uh, plus formatting, and you get then uh, a cover design for your ebook and your paperback and an audiobook, um, and you also get the formatting done, so like the EPUB, MOBI file, and the PDF. Um, and that's um, between, it depends a little bit on if you're enlisted in self-publishing school, because we have some discounts for uh, members of self-publishing school, uh, but it's between the $400 and $450. Okay. So that's, that's our most... Uh, most common uh yeah package but yeah we also have packages for editing and promotion and yeah, sure. we do a lot of things yeah editing is editing i mean that can take that can cost you you know anywhere from 400 to you know a couple thousand dollars depending on what right. you yeah know. <clears throat> yeah depending also, on how you're on the, on the on, on, on how many edits you want to, I mean, any edits rounds you want to have, and you can have like a developmental edit and a content edit and a copy edit and a proofread. So mm -hmm. some authors want all those uh, and some just want one or, or two of those. So do you actually edits. do that work yourself or, or do you contract that out? No, we contract that out. We actually have a team of people we work with, like the professionals we work with, uh, because you don't want to be uh, edit your English novel. You don't want people, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> just listening to my accent that makes sense so no uh no uh, we we make sure that the professionals are, are doing those uh, those things so uh, at the moment we have i think like three three professional editors in our team uh we have three or four cover design artists so our, we have a big team of people who are, are doing those things mm -hmm. me personally i do a lot of the book trailers um um i do some coaching as well um so yeah i'm a cover my wife is one of the cover design artists so it depends a little bit on the service. Cool. Cool. So one, uh, another question I have for you, and this is kind of off, off the topic of your, uh, of your company, but uh, <clears throat> given that English is not your first language mm -hmm. and you're having your books translated into English uh, and according to your site, Spanish, Portuguese, and Italian, um, <clears throat> do you speak all those languages? No, well, English, yeah, but English, no, I uh, I do have a background in Portuguese uh, because I lived in, uh, on, on an island called Madeira, uh, that's close to the coast of Morocco. Uh, I lived there for two years when I was eight. My my father opened up an, a diving uh, diving uh, diving club. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a diving instructor, so uh, so I do have some knowledge about the Portuguese language, but I was eight. So that's like 25, 20. 60 years ago. <laughs> so, and if you don't speak a, a language, you just forget it. It is right. somewhere in the back of my mind. I mean, if you drop me in Spanish or uh, Portuguese, uh, because those languages are very similar. So if you drop me in the, one of those uh, countries, I lived in Mexico as well, like a few years back. That's Spanish, of course, but due to my Portuguese background, within like a month or so, I could I understand everything and speak back as well a bit so it is still in the back of my my my, my head but I, it's not enough to translate a book or or know what if the translation is any good for for that matter so uh so cool. i have to make sure that you find people that know uh spanish and yeah they can, right. they can, can trust yeah the beta readers oh yeah exactly yeah so i'm, I'm just kind of curious since you know you know english mm -hmm. uh really well and and speak it um how many times did you uh look at something that was translated into english and and uh um did not make much sense to you as far as the words because what i notice is that you know i've had editors that are were from other count countries and they mm -hmm. would change um the words because it didn't make any sense to them versus a uh, an american vernacular i guess right yeah you know yeah, I, well, often I have that with my own translations as well, but also just if I just pick up a random book, because I also, I also read in English. Uh, I read in Dutch and in English, but uh, I, even with uh, uh, traditional published books, sometimes I see a word and was like, from, why did, did you use that word? So I suppose, but, but I have the same thing when I get it back from my editor. I make sure that um, for my own books, I have an, a native um, 
English speaking um, editor and I'm preferably an American um, because there's a small difference of course with American English and UK English oh, yeah. Um, so so yeah if I have a preference I, I choose the American one but uh, yeah sometimes you have that but still I, I make sure you're the professional if you think this word is better at least if it makes some sort of sense I, I go with with what they suggest sure okay <laughs> I, you know, that's, that's one of the things that, uh, that is always, for me, I always try and find it. Now I try and find an American or a Canadian editor that, uh, that, uh, you know, speaks the language because most of my book sales are, are here, you know, right. and every now and then I get somebody contacting me from like the UK or something like that, or someplace like that to say, do you know, you misspelled this word? And it's like, no, I, I, I didn't. Um, only in your country did I, you know, exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, but, uh, even my, uh, you know, I, I use, uh, the, uh, pro writing aid, um, right. just to kind of brush over things before I send it off. And, uh, every now and then <clears throat> it will tell me, do you want the British spelling or do you want the American spelling of this, you know, or <laughs> yeah, just, I always think it's kind of funny. Yeah. Both words mean yeah. the same thing. Yeah, it is. And for me, it's just like, from why did you just don't have to, it's one language. Why did you use just the same words? But yeah, yeah, it's just the way it is, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> so what got you into being an author? I mean, what, what, what drives you to, uh, to write? I mean, is it just a, a passion that you grew up with, uh, overactive imagination, um, well, bo both, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I started out when I was about eight years old, right about the time when I uh, when we lived in, in Madeira, um, because I was always a, a big, and I stay where I'm a big reading uh, fanatic, um, especially those those ghost stories like uh, Goosebumps, and, and we have some Dutch, uh, famous Dutch authors who basically do the same thing as, uh, as R. Alstein. Um, so I was crazy about those books, um, and I devoured them, but uh, living in Portugal and around that time, it wasn't that easy just to send over copy uh, books via mail or something. So I had my grandma uh, sending me books uh, via um, like the big ships, like the, 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 I don't know what the English word for it is, but via ships, they, they, show, they, they shipped um, uh, supplies to us. Um, and I was asked, can you just also put some books in there as well? Like every three or four months, we get a new shipment. Uh, and I had like three or four books, but uh, those books are not that thick, uh, like 100 pages each or something. Right. So within like a week and a half, I devoured those three books and I had to wait like another three, four months before I could read another uh, Dutch novel because my Portuguese was getting better at that time, but it wasn't close to being good enough to read it. So I had to wait before, uh, before I got some new Dutch books coming, uh, coming in. Um, so then I just started writing my own uh, stories uh, just to fill up the time, basically. And it was always just something I thought everybody did, I suppose. I mean, I, I didn't have any uh, friends that were into reading as well. So I just wrote it for myself and just put them somewhere in, my, uh, in a dresser or something. I just never looked back at those and started another story. I, I don't even think my parents knew that I did that. Um, but, but I just have uh, ever done that before. Uh, and then when I was, I think 16, 16, 17, um, like in high school, uh, I started, um, yeah, looking a little bit more into actually the craft of it. So reading a lot of how to books, um, I started doing some uh, short story competitions as well. Um, not that I had any chance of winning it, but I knew I didn't have any chance of winning it, but I make sure I picked up the competitions that, um, had a big, uh, jury in it. Um, and I got a lot of feedback so I can learn from that feedback. So that was basically my entire goal of uh, running those, uh, those competitions. Uh, so I did that and I slowly started starting learning and, uh, I'm a big fan of, Stephen King, Dean Koontz, Peter Straub, those types of American authors. Um, so yeah, my first stories and my, 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 my stories at this moment as well are a little bit like, like those authors. So I, I, I call myself suspense author um, and not per se a horror author because I write fantasy, I write thrillers, I write horror, uh, but it's, I would say it's like suspense. Well, you know, um, yeah. one thing that I kind of notice, and, and maybe it's <clears throat> just in, in the genre that I write in, but uh, 
um, you're starting to see a mix of genres. You know, yeah. it used to be, you know, you're writing thriller. Okay. Now you're writing fantasy. Now there's fantasy thrillers. Now there's, you know, like I do grim dark and, and dark fantasy type stuff. So it's like, you know, some people say, well, you're a horror writer. It's like, no, I'm still writing fantasy. You know, it's, it's an urban fantasy setting and it's dark fantasy, meaning that it's, you know, or grim dark, which means it's, it's gritty, you know, it, right. it's got some, uh, it's got some violence. It's, it's R rated, you know, that type of stuff. Um, and uh, I notice a lot, like, you know, you see the RPG or the lit RPG and, and you see the, uh, like the steampunks, um, you know, all that kind of stuff is, is starting to kind of meld into uh, other genres yeah. and, and being kind of mixed in, which I think makes a really interesting book, um, especially, you know, because you can hit different crowds of people that have, you know, different likes and then it actually introduces them to a, a little bit different twist on their genre. Yeah, um, I, but I think that's one of the reasons why that, that's happening uh, because you want to serve more people and, um, and, and like you said, it makes for a more interesting book, I suppose, as well. So I think that's one of the reasons why, why that's happening. But I, I think you're right. You see it, it's getting more and more common. Like those major tropes are, are basically getting away a bit, We're basically right. stepping away, away from those major tropes and just say that you're a horror, horror author or a thriller author. You just, I always say I just write suspense and it depends on the novel you pick up for me, if it's a little bit more fantasy or more, or more horror or more thriller. Well, I, and I... I... I like Patterson. I like his writing style and, right. uh, you know, he's got, you know, a billion books out there and, and he's, uh, you know, he, he's got a certain um, way of moving the story forward and he's purely thriller. You know, I mean, he, I know he, he has uh, other authors that uh, write underneath of him or, he, you know, he kind of goes into fantasy and he, he can basically do whatever he wants. He's that, yeah. you know, that big, but uh, his basic, um, <clears throat> um his basic thriller books you know his alex cross books and everything else you know short chapters move the story forward you know he also implements uh you know third person limited chapters right in the middle of the book so you can see somebody else's perspective but mostly it's first person you know and um i i think it's really interesting when you bring that type of writing into you know urban fantasy is traditionally you know first person and dark fantasy can also fall underneath there but then if i you know i try and incorporate the the short chapters and in and the moving things along and you know it, so it's it's not like epic fantasy where you have to build this huge world and you know it, before you get you know your first forty thousand words you're finally getting into the story you know I, yeah, yeah. Urban, urban fantasy is more you know okay here's the world it's what you live in right now boom here you go and then i can move the story forward i i think that combination has been really kind of cool looking at uh what you've written you kind of do the same thing you you uh you combine two or three different genres and and uh into your thriller book so i mean you can have a fantasy thriller book and uh so i mean it looks like that's worked out really well for you yeah well i think that's that's one of the reasons why um i published 13 uh books so far um and and has have a, have a pretty big audience here uh, in the netherlands uh because there there are there are not very many authors in the netherlands doing what i do i mean you have a lot of thriller authors and you have some some horror no, uh, novelists but there are hardly any authors who successfully mix the genres the way that i do and but I, it's not something i i ever thought of in, in the sense that I'm, I'm, I don't start off a novel saying to myself, okay, I want to have this element, that element, and that element, um, because I'm, um, I, I don't, I'm, I don't plot my novels. I just have like a begin scene in, a, in, a, in my head. Um, and, and that scene intrigues me and I want to know what's, what's going on. So I just sit down and write. And sometimes like uh, 80 or 90,000 words along, I, I notice, Hey, this is a little bit more like a fantasy type novel. And, <laughs> And the next book is more fun. I could just leave it more horror. So it's, I never oh, think about this. Oh, so you're a pantser, not a plotter, definitely, huh? Definitely. definitely. I must uh, say, like, the, the last few um, um, books I did are a little bit more plotting, uh, plot-wise, but it's also depending 
on if I co-author a book because I co-authored about three novels with three different uh, uh, writers. And then, of course, you have to do some sort of plotting. Otherwise, it's, it's not going to work. But right. for my own books, I try to be as much like I use the pencil method as much as I can. Just, just for informational purposes, for those of you who aren't authors and have no idea what we're talking about, um, <clears throat> there's two. There's, I mean, there's several types of, of of authors, but we're talking about pantsers and plotters. So a pantser is somebody who just writes and has no real plan, and the story just kind of develops naturally, organically, and, and those types of people just have this great imagination, and they can go from you know from uh, chapter to chapter and it, things just flow and, and they don't need to have really a script or an outline to uh, go by. Even they kind of make one, but then the story kind of changes. A plotter is somebody who has a detailed outline and then they write on the outline and, and everything's mapped out. And so then they have the story completely mapped out and they just have to add in the details usually. And, um, probably the plotting method is probably the most efficient and is probably the one that gives you the least amount of problems. Um, the uh, pantsing method. Um, that's, a, is, that's the fun. Of it's, the two. it's the fun. It's the part, more yeah. fun of the two. Yeah. Right. Right. I, I start out as a plotter mm -hmm. and then I pants the hell out of the next 10 chapters. And then it's right. like, Oh crap. And then I have to rewrite my, because I, I want to really be organized, but then all of a sudden it's like, I'm way off track. Where'd this story go? Hey, I have a, <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. But <clears throat> so it gets a little nuts, but I'm sure as I, as I grow up in this world, I think uh, um, I'll probably try and plot more than I pants, but pantsing is so much fun. Yeah. You know what? You don't, I, I, I uh, speak to a lot of authors and say, yeah, I want to plot. Uh, and to be honest, it, it works. I mean, if I plot a, a book out, um, I can see why it works, but A, it's just less fun. And B, um, I'm known for the amount of plot twists in my books. And mm -hmm. I know for a fact that if I plotted those novels out, I wouldn't have as many plot twists in those novels than I have when I pants. Um, and the main reason is because if I'm like on a crossroads with my uh, main character and he can decide to go left or right, um, me as because i'm basically the first reader of that story while, while i'm typing it so when i'm thinking okay if i'm a reader right now I, he's definitely going left then i absolutely will go right with that character and i do that right. all the time during that novel and that makes it fun so my question for you is and i do this because i'm i'm fairly psychotic but i'm just kind of curious if you do the same thing how many times have you gotten in an argument with your main character it's like why the hell did you just do that oh, oh. Uh, constantly constantly it, you know, yeah. you're sitting and there the main, and you're writing and all of a sudden he, he does something and it's like, what the hell did you just do? You ruined my story. Okay, now oh, we yeah. got to figure this out. Yeah, I've even negotiated yeah, with my main character and lost. And it's like, okay, we'll go this direction. But, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> yeah, and, and the, the main problem I always run into when I use the pencil math is like three quarters of the novel I'm always stuck. I can't, can't, I have no clue where to go. I have that, those, that many arguments with my, my, my characters. And they was like, you know, just, you, you brought us here. Just fuck it. You, you just solved the right. problem. Yeah. And, and I was like, okay, thanks guys. This, and then I do like, think about it for like two months before I can uh, continue. But those books eventually are actually the, the best ones I wrote because it has more plot twist and yeah, you don't see those things coming. I've got a book that I'm fighting with right now. And about a week ago, I had the conversation. Seriously, Jacob, do you want to die? Because this is how you die. You know, and, and this yeah. is how your book ends. Do you really want to die? And uh, he basically told me that, uh, <clears throat> figure it out, dude. Right. No, I don't want to yeah. die. But that's, that's, the what they, that's what they always do, right? Mm -hmm. They always say, you, you figure it out. You, you create us. I was like, you, you, you're, you, you're telling you to go left or right. And you, yeah, you created us. You figure it out. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it's really funny the, the kinds of problems that uh, I'm going to put it on my main character personality because you know all of a sudden he does something really stupid, gets himself into a pickle, and then just kind of looks at me at this dumb look on. No, you figure this out. Right. It's your problem, not mine. It's like, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, um, so what do you got coming up? You got anything, uh, anything, uh, about to be published or anything like that? And that's a very leading question. Cause I already know the answer, but go ahead. 
Yeah, so um, like a year and a half ago, I started translating some of my novels and basically stacked them up before I uh, published those uh, because I basically want to do what they call like a certain rapid release. So like every four to eight weeks, I'm basically publishing or a short story or a novel. Um, so I just finished an, uh, my first nonfiction book like four weeks ago. Um, and now my next fiction book is coming out. It's called Broken Memory. Um, and it's a suspense novel, of course. Um, so yeah, it's coming out on the 20th. Um, and that's a novel that's originally published here in Netherlands in 2015. Um, and I co-wrote that uh, originally with uh, Jos Weimer. Uh, he was one of my main uh, editors. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's a crazy story. It was nominated for an Harland Award. Um, and actually ended up uh, on the second position that uh, that oh, year. Cool. So I'm very proud of that novel. Um, and it's it's a weird ass novel. It starts out like a Stephen King ish uh, novel with with a main character who is uh, he's basically a black black person, uh, and he ends up uh, trapped in a white man's body uh, in an airplane that's trapped uh, trapped in an airplane just with a, a nine year old girl uh, next to him. Um, there's this this strange light coming out of the windows and when they finally made it out of the airplane they are stumbling to like a small town where there's just like a few people living there and those people are basically telling them yeah this is it dude this is this is the afterlife you're dead and yeah live with it um uh, and mm. of course the question is if, if there's nothing more to the story than gender's dad uh, so basically mixed with with between a horror novel and a science fiction novel um, so yeah, that's coming out on the, on the 20th. I'm really excited about that. Cool. And then you said that you have a nonfiction book that you just published. Well, what's yeah, that all it's, about? It's called Publish. Um, and, uh, it's basically everything I learned about traditional publishing a book and self-publishing a book. So it's full with tips and tricks, uh, about cover design, marketing, publishing, everything I learned along the way. It's, uh, I, I did that. And the main reason I did that, um, because I got, a, I work with a lot of authors, of course, through my uh, company, Cutting a Studio, um, and you get a lot of the same sort of questions. And I, I like to help as many authors out as I, as I can, but, uh, but I'm uh, limited to a certain amount of time <laughs> a day has. Right. Um, so I was like, you know what, I just write this down so I can just hand them a copy uh, or let them download a copy uh, so at least they know the basics. Uh, and if they still have questions after that, they can still uh, shoot me up on that, of course. Sure. Yep. So, uh, we're gonna we're gonna kind of wrap this up a little bit. I know that, or a little bit. We're gonna wrap this up, um, just because of you know we've been going for a while here now. I guess, um, looking at the time. <clears throat> Jsharpfiction.com uh, is where they can find your books. Right. They also have a Facebook page, J Sharp Books. Uh, your Instagram is J J Sharp Fiction. Right. And uh, then you also have the uh, if they want if somebody wants to get a hold of you and look at your uh, look for your services your book cover designs and editing and everything else that's cutting dash edge dash studio dot com. Correct. Is that yeah. correct? Okay. Yeah. And uh, do you have a website for your blues band? Uh, yeah, chitin dash crew uh, dot I think it's dot com it's, or dot com or dot nl I think it's dot com. Okay. <laughs> Cool. You can find us on Spotify as well. So if you just type in Chitling Crew, you find us. We have, we, yeah, we have one uh, album out at the moment. We're working on the second album. Um, so the first album is on uh, on there somewhere. Oh, so you have a CD out. Yeah, definitely. Or uh, an album, I guess. I'm sorry. It's no longer yeah. CDs. <laughs> yeah, we have both. It's, I'll it's, date myself. So you have an eight yeah. track out, huh? Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, cassette tape whatever all right um you know what it's been an absolute pleasure to uh to get you get to know you um thanks for having and, me on uh, no problem at all is there anything else that you want to tell your readers listeners or anybody else who's thinking about buying one of your books uh, no no really just check check me out if you don't have never heard about me and my, my books check me out on the size that uh that, yeah jeff just uh just mentioned um, and feel free to send me a message. I always love to, uh, to engage with my readers. Uh, if you like, if you go on my website, you can subscribe to my newsletter. Um, I have a lot of uh, cats uh, uh, in the round and I always, in my newsletter, have like cats videos and, and pictures. And of course, inside stories about the books and uh, the, the way I write. And so you really get, uh, can get to know me a little bit uh, in there as well. Cool beans. 
Well, with that, we're going to bid everybody adieu. This is Jeff Bacon for the uh, DIY Writer Podcast, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.